paper was like gold in medieval times. I want tobacco. Sugar. That everything we thought we knew about the world might turn out to be completely wrong. Good evening. We're sorry to bother you, but my brother here has been burgled by his wife. Would you expect me to tell him that every day when he left for work, that creep bloke from the video shop would roll up on his motorbike, and within minutes the whole street would be resounding to the sound of his wife's deafening orgasms? We're from the Liberal Democrats, and we'd like your views on law and order. <laughs> oh. Hello there, William. Yeah, well, the soil is particularly rich, because this is where we bury Frank the Fat Man Mackenzie. What is it? I don't know the scientific name for it. You will tell me if you want to get in touch with you, won't you, William? And I wouldn't try to get into contact with Nico and Gilda, because there's a lot worse than Mr. Middlemas out there. Well, yes. I'm very much a good things done, man. Oh, hello, Gilda, and how are you? If I ran for that door, would you try and stop me? Yeah. You let her go. Don't cry. He's not worth it. He's a crap brother. Oh. Quite frankly, old girl, you don't need him. You more than please. Sure, love. Do you mind if I stop for some diesel on the way? Sorry for the delay, sweetheart. You know the trouble with this country? I'll tell you. Nobody's got any manners anymore. They're not talk managers, not like we were. Oh, no. I'll tell you something else is wrong with this country. Too many old people. True, though, on it, eh? <laughs> and it's gonna get worse. There's a population bold, you see. And you know what makes me laugh? The amount of money we spend on trying to keep the old buggers alive. I mean, the minute one of them gets something wrong with them, what do we do? We ship them into hospital and start shoring them up with bits of plastic. You know, plastic knees, plastic hips, plastic arms even. And it's all the taxpayers' money, isn't it, eh? Mm. Nah. We should let them fall apart the way that Mother Nature intended. Otherwise, we're going to be overrun. And we're going to be knee-deep in incontinence and dribble. Thanks, sir. It's common sense, really, isn't it? And I'll tell you another thing that's sending this country down a path. Fucking speed bumps. Double bowling and a clovage. Give us a and will you? 
It's the only way you can pull women these days, eh? All right, my love. Good game, good game. Hey, I drove Brucey once, you know. Was he funny? Nah, none of them are in real life. It's an old tears of the clown syndrome, isn't it? They're all damaged people, comedians. Yeah, shame. <laughs> Why don't you behave yourself, eh? Go. Oh. <coughs> well, near, near. <laughs> you take any exercise. Eight mile a day running, I do. Minimum. I do you reckon I am, mate? Go on. I don't know. 51. Well, how old are you, then? 51. What do you think he's going to do with her? This is Susan Smith. We can't take your call right now. Please speak after the turn. Um, hi. It's me. Again. Uh, look, I, I know that... Well, what I'm trying to say is, uh, uh, I'm sorry about w what happened at the hotel, and uh, I, I wasn't really choosing uh, between you and her. Honestly, I, I wasn't. And, uh, and I know she's, she's, uh, she's a she's a what? Come on, come on. A thief and uh, a slut. Woo! As you pointed out several times, but. Uh, well, I, I, I still have feelings for her, and, 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 and I couldn't bear the thought of her in prison. Oh, bless him. Anyway, uh, if you give us a bell. Uh, I, 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 I'm visiting Auntie Doreen, but I should be back around. To... She's not here, mate. Sorry? She's not here. Bed's not been slept in, no sign of her. Who is this speaking, please? Uh, we're her builders. Don't leave a message. Um... If you could ask her to ring William. William, no problem, mate. Does he sound like a sad act or what? You look so laughable, unphotographable. Yes, you're my favorite work of art. Is your figure less than Greek? Is your mouth a little? When you open it to speak, are you smart? Let's do away with the formality, shall we? <gasps> it's never an easy way to do that, is it? Your name, please. According to this, it's Susan Smith. It's a very dull name, isn't it? That's my personal property. I demand you return it immediately. It's an interesting use of the word demand. I've not heard somebody who's tied up demand before. The contents of your handbag were very dull as well. I was hoping for a vibrator at least. Are you single, Susan Smith? None of your business. Alone. That's a sure bet. Do you work for Middlemas? <laughs> no. <laughs> no, I don't work for Teddy. Funny enough, I used to. A long time ago, when you could watch a Peter Sellers film, slash up the seats, and still have change from half a crown. Now then, Susan Smith. I am reliably informed that you and a man were making a laughably amateurish attempt to stake out a certain international airport hotel. 
and you're asking questions about Gilda. Why? What's Gilda to you? She's nothing to me. She's my sister-in-law. She has a clock that belongs to me, that's all. A clock? Yes. It was left to me by my dad. I thought Gilda had taken it, which was why we were at the hotel. Where's Gilda now? I've no idea. Look, I've told you everything I know, so you might as well let me go. Let you go? Why on earth would I let you go? Middlemus asked me loads of questions about Gilda and he let me go. Yes, well, he and I are very different people. Oh, you, you look uncannily similar to me. We've got a lippy one here, Ainsley. Oh, dear. How unfortunate. He has me in tuck some days. He should be on the telly. Well, as a photo fit, at least. Very good. Yes. Very good. Now then. Back to Gilda. It's really changed, He's totally disappeared. Doesn't that bother you? He's your brother, isn't he? Only when he wants to borrow money. Yeah, but he might be in trouble. Of course he is. He's Nico. No, but I mean really big trouble. There's some very nasty... Look, darling, I'm sorry Nico ran out on you. But he'd never run out on me. Fine, then there's no problem, is there? Now, if you'll excuse me, I've got a restaurant to open. Well, like... The thing is, right, I'm trying to track him down and I've got a bit of a cash flow crisis, so I was wondering if... I thought you Greek families were supposed to be close. Is that right? Well, we've all been in England a long time now. Is there any change, mister? Oh, do me a favour, please. And that's all I know, I swear. She's married to my brother, but she two-timed him. She stole virtually all his property. And now this man, Middlemas, is after her boyfriend. Ex-boyfriend. Ha! Huh. He dumped her, did he? There was dumping involved, yes. You see, <clears throat> the thing is, Susan Smith, that young Nico offered to sell me some material from Teddy Middlemas' his safe. I thought that we had a deal, but then the little monkey started hiking up his price. Well, uh, something I couldn't tolerate, obviously. Graham! I was just telling Susan here how you killed Nico for me. <coughs> All right. See, funny thing is that Nico would probably have expected us to torture him first, you know, to find out what he'd done with all the stuff, but... To be honest, he'd got right out my nose by then, so I said just kill him, Graham, didn't I? Still, Gilda will lead us to the item. When we find her, she can't be far. You did remember to check that Gilda wasn't in the hotel room, didn't you? Of course I checked. She'd done a runner. I went up to the room and all there was was this one or some weedy bloke having a rare. So I went back to the cab. Of course I checked Gilda wasn't in the room. Now why would I forget to do something like that? Well, you know, you're not getting any younger, are you? No offence, Graham. I want to go home. Yes, yes, all in good time. I want to go home. <laughs> Oh dear. It's all right, love. You don't have to say anything. There's nothing to say, really, is there? It's the kind of occasion when the English language is found wanting. Come on, love. You'll come and visit me in the hospice, won't you? Of course. It's a surprisingly jolly place, they tell me. Just as long as they don't make me play bridge. Oh, I'm so sorry. You're sorry? 
I've just lashed out £600 on a new sofa. Still, you could have it now, can't you, love? Seeing as how your house is something of a furniture-free zone. Any news from... What was her name again? Gilda. No, no news. So you haven't tried to run away again, then? No. Not much point now, is there? How's Susan? Well, actually, I think she might have run away. Would you like me to get you some more newspapers? No. No, they're all Princess Diana and train crashes. It's not like Susan to run away. No, but uh, she's very angry at the moment. She was born angry. And, uh, how's Maureen this morning? Doreen. Yes, sorry. Sorry. Sorry, things have been a bit uh, pressured recently. I've had a hell of a shift. So, how is Doreen? She's got cancer of the liver. Right. Ah, uh, I see. So, so, so you, 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 um, someone, someone, um... Yes. The consultant told me last night. Had to put him on the spot, mind. Didn't he tell you he told me? Did nobody tell you? Um... Uh, no. N no, 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 but then the ward's, the ward's been very hectic, uh, recently, and, um... Actually, do you mind if I just sit down for a moment? <sighs> no, 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 no. This just won't do. Did I leave my paper in here? What's this old shit, then? It's Verdi, if you must know. Italian? Yes, Italian. Nation of wankers. You should have seen them at Alamein, they were crap. Oh, yes, dreadful fighters, the Italians. I mean, look at the ancient Romans, what a bunch of pansies they were. I'm talking about the modern Itai. You see, in their football, the way they roll around on the ground like girlies, every time someone tackles them. Well, no sign of Gilda. We've looked everywhere. Gilda will turn up, we, we just have to be patient. Patient, my ass. The trail's gone cold. It's time you took your tablets, isn't it, Mr. Middlemass? I'm not taking them. But the doctor said... According to that quack, my ticker should have spared me all this a long time ago. Fine, Gilda. I need that material back. But you won't be getting it, will you? Because you're too slow to move. Too weak as always. Get out! I'll do what I like. Gerald! Come along, Mr. Middlemass. <laughs> <laughs> You little bastard! Any more takers, then? No, no! Come on! You could kill him! I know, I know. That's what he wants. I really just called round on the off chance. Yeah, well, Dennis should be back soon. He's just working such long hours at the moment. The bank's rationalising, and it's poor old Dennis's job to do the dirty work. I mean, he hates it, of course. But as he says, if he didn't do it, then somebody else would. William, are you all right? Well, it has been a bit of a week. I, I don't suppose Susan's rung by any chance, has she? Susan? Susan hasn't been in touch with Dennis since... Well, since he left her. Why? Oh, long story. Hiya! Hi. Look, why don't you stay for dinner? I don't think I'd be very good company. You're never good company, you miserable old bugger. My God, you look grim. What's happened? Well, this is superb. How was your dry toast? What is that noise? Hmm? Oh, that. 
That is the unmistakable sound of drunk Indonesian generals playing crazy golf. Now then, Susan Smith, would your brother know any more about young Gilda's whereabouts? No. He's finished with her. Sounds like we're pleased about that. You knew she was wrong for him, eh? Big sis knows best. Well, if you don't tell me where Gilda is, I shall just have to pull your brother in. Why can't you leave us alone? We're just... Ordinary, decent people. I know, I know. It's not right, is it, Susan, eh? There you are, a hard-working citizen with... Well, very little, it seems to me. And yet I've got all this. And how do you think I got it? All sorts of naughty ways, none of them legal. Of course, I'm totally legit nowadays. I'm an arms supply consultant. That's my core business, although I am developing a little sideline in human organs for transplant. You know, a tourist in Bangkok gets bopped on the head, wakes up with one of his kidneys on its way to Saudi Arabia. Well, that dancer's are here. OK. So don't change your hair for me. Not if you care for me. Oh, by the way, did you pick up my lottery winnings? Oh, yeah. It's funny, isn't it? Can't seem to stop winning. Third week on the trot now. Right, well, we're going to have a little bit of a party. And, uh, you... <laughs> you try and get some rest now. Could be a big day for you tomorrow. <laughs> So, let me get this straight. You're saying that Susan's gone AWOL and you're worried whether she's somehow fallen back into the clutches of this middle mass person. Well, it's a possibility, yes. And you want me to go with you to see this man? Yes. Th this man who buries people in his garden? Well, says he does. <laughs> it's one for the police, old boy, isn't it? No point, I'm afraid. Susan went to them before they weren't interested. Well, it, it's not that I don't want to help. It's just that I'm not sure what we can do. I mean, we can't just fetch up and accuse this man of things. I mean, no, no, I, I suppose not. No, I'm, I, I'm just not thinking very clearly. I'm afraid. Oh, that's understandable. What with Gilda running out and this business with your auntie. I know. I must have shot an albatross. Susan's probably just taken off somewhere in a moody. She'll turn up. You know her. She's HMS indestructible. police sniffer dog. They used it to sniff out drugs and so uh, so after a while it developed a bit of a personality problem. You mean it's a junkie dog? No, oh, it's a paranoid junkie dog. <laughs> so, what's all this you're making? A souffle. It's a bit ambitious isn't it? Three weeks ago you couldn't cook and now you're attempting the culinary equivalent of a moonshot. Yeah, it's the magic of evening classes. Watch. Whoa. And uh, 
Is Gilda learning to cook? <laughs> no, she didn't equip that girl for cooking. Gilda could burn water. Where is she? I don't know, she'll be back by now. She said she was nipping up the video shop. Probably having trouble choosing. Going to be a bit of a shock for Gilda. Settling down to married life. Yeah, you say that again. Do you think she's cut out for it? Meaning what? Well, she's very young, Bill. Well, the way I look at it is if she's old enough to fight for a country, then she's old enough to marry me. She wants to. Look. Sorry, you've got to say this. Everyone thinks it, but nobody will say it. You and Gilda getting married, it's... Well, it's not very likely to work, is it? I mean, you hardly know each other at all. And then there's the age difference. Oh, I just can't bear to see you digging a hole for yourself. I have to say something. It's the caring thing to do, isn't it? It's not the caring thing to do, actually. It's the bossy, domineering thing to do. But then you just had to say it, didn't you? You were merely obeying the natural laws of the universe. Light travels faster than sound. The Earth orbits around the sun. And Susan Smith is always right. I know what I'm doing, Susan. I don't need big sister's advice. That bit still looks a bit thin to me. Really? Well, what was I supposed to do? Pretend I wasn't worried when I am. I happen to think you're making a big mistake. She's just a... Oh, she's just a slip of a girl. Oh, hallelujah. I just realised. This isn't about me at all, is it? This is about Dennis. What? He left you for a slip of a girl, and now I'm about to do the same. And never mind that I'll be happy. Oh, your jealousy just won't allow it. Happiness doesn't just arrive. It has to be built on something. It involves putting some work in. I will be happy, Susan. You watch me. Gilda's good for me. All my life, there's been this part of me that's just been waiting to be reached. Yes, but unfortunately, it's the part that lives inside your trousers. I'm not missing this chance, Susan. No, I'm not going to end up like you. And what's that mean, exactly? I'm not going to be uh, alone and bitter and dried up. Dried up? Yes. Oh, I see. Just because I haven't got a man, I'm dried up, am I? You've turned into a harridan. Everyone says so. He left me, remember? Well, what drove him to her, Susan? You did. You did that. <laughs> no, no just, just don't inflict your misery on me. Now I've run out of eggs. Sounds like Gilda forgot a key again. He left me. And that makes just too thick now. watch scheme, yeah. but you can't set up stop and search security checkpoints. That was made perfectly clear after the incident with the gypsy. You're not supposed to have weapons either. Uh, but no, 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 see, this isn't a weapon, uh, it's, a, it's a restraining device. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. It's a kosh. Well, technically it is Everyone a kosh. Everyone turn out your pockets, come on. Oh, it's like look, a kosh. Look, could, it's a sort of thing. thing. Oh, hello, you must be Nico's sister. I'm Gilda. Nefarist. Right, that's it. Who else is carrying a Luger? And we've decided on the birth plan, so if the doctors do try and pressurise us, Dennis can just be masterful and say thank you, but no, we have a birth plan. You, you'll be at the birth then, Dennis? Of course he will. Well, it's just... Well, you've always been a bit squeamish about blood, haven't you? Well, yes, but I'm, uh, I'm sure I'll be so carried away with the wonder of the experience that uh, I won't notice all that stuff. It'll be all right. You'll be fine. Of course. Well, uh, I must be off. Well, don't be a stranger. There's going to be a difficult few months for you. And try not to worry about Susan. I mean, 
I'm not married to her anymore. I can't just come running every time she hits a spot of bother. You understand, don't you, Will? If she doesn't turn up by tomorrow, I'm going to go and see Middlemas. Right. Uh, I'm in meetings all tomorrow. Don't worry. God, Susan's bloody gift, isn't it? Weighing us all down with guilt. That knack she got of making everyone feel they're going to somehow be a permanent bloody disappointment to her. But I was bound to let her down in the end, wasn't I? Self-fulfilling prophecy. I suppose I could try and shift some of those meetings. No, no, don't. It's OK. Uh, please don't worry. Oh, all right. Um, take care, eh, mate? Cheers. Yeah. Cheers, Dennis. When did you have this test? Six weeks ago. The agency can confirm it. And you definitely haven't been with anybody since you had the test? Definitely. Fair enough. Any preference on type of condom? What? Condom. We don't want to hear the pitter-patter of little Mr Jessards, do we? <laughs> don't we? She thinks we shouldn't get married. Well, then let her think that. So, if she disapproves, so what? She's only a relative. I'm the one you got to keep happy. I love you. I thought you were getting a video. Oh, uh, yeah. Oh, I couldn't choose. Now, come on, let's go and irritate your sister. Proper cabbie, then. I'm a proper cabbie. Well, I just thought it might be a cover, you know, for your other line of business. I was a cabbie for 17 years. Traffic got in the manion. Couldn't stand it anymore. So I became a hit man instead. Less aggravation. What's the money like? Pretty good. Jezard's got me on a rolling contract, which is handy considering the size of my negative equity. Yeah. You don't happen to know anybody who wants to buy a five-bedroom job down in Berkshire, do you? Ranch style, got a new roof. Nah, sorry. He's up there. Good morning, Susan Smith. <laughs> mm, look at the hairs on that. Now, where were we? I have no idea where the stupid bitch is, OK? So you said. However, I always start off on the premise that people are lying. That way I'm never disappointed. Are you on the internet? No? Oh, it's great fun. I started three rumours yesterday. Tenor says one of them makes it into The Guardian. Now, here's a good trivia question for you. How many bones do you think there are in the human face? It was a belter of a night. The one who was in that bed, you know, the woman whose son broke his nose on gladiators. Well, she's gone. What, she's dead? Well, she hasn't run away to join the circus. 
chaos in here. There were documentaries made about this place. You mark my words. So, why such an early visit? Well, I've, I've, I've got to go and see somebody. I see. Now that I'm dying, I'm not to be told anything in case it worries me. Is that it? No. Liar. Crap liar, in fact. Oops. Here he comes. Morning, Dorian. How are, how are you this morning? Still dying, Doctor. Are you all right? Yes. Yes, yeah, just a little bit low on energy, that's all. Another long and busy night, I'm afraid. Still comes with the territory. Management just keep doctors working under more and more pressure till they get very tired and start hearing voices telling them to do bad things. Well, open wide. Send for your brother. Be nice to get the family together. In the meantime, there's something I want to show you. Ricky! Twenty-two is the answer, by the way. There are 22 bones in the face. Well, 28 if you include the small hearing bones. Now, <laughs> the funny thing about this little nonsense is that it all arose out of a conversation about a condom. She should go to hospital. Hospital? Oh, please. Should be going to a private clinic. After all, she might be carrying my baby. Yes, but uh, we see this as very much state of the art, uh, post millennial. All I'm saying is that I'd prefer something more classical. Classical? Right. I have some examples here, look. Now, you ever been to Knossos? Arnie, there's something about this Greek stuff. I want to see Mr. Middlemas, and I, I'm not leaving until I do. See, what I'm talking about is symmetry. Visual harmonies that... Can I help you, Mr. Smith? Yes, I've... I've come about my sister. She's disappeared. I'll, um, come back later, shall I? Oh, yeah. OK. Thank you. We've no knowledge of your sister's whereabouts. Why should we have her? Well, you snatched her before. <coughs> you carry on. <laughs> so did it long me. Right, girl. Any port in a storm? With respect, Mr. Smith, I don't think it's fair for you to fling aspersions. I know nothing about your sister. I'm not sure I believe you. Now, listen. Can I ask you where you last saw your sister, Mr. Smith? Yeah, it was in a hotel at Heathrow. What were you doing there? Well, we were... We were there on, um, family business. Anything to do with Gilda? No. Because I did ask you to inform me of any contact with her, didn't I? Yes, yeah, uh, yes, absolutely. So, you left Susan behind at this hotel? No, she left. Uh, last I saw, she was shooting off in a taxi. What colour was the taxi? What? What colour was the bloody taxi? <laughs> well, it was white, I think, but what? What? Trevor! <laughs> Gerald! Don't worry, Mr Smith, we'll get your sister back for you. Fetch the kit, we're off to the zoo. Right. Got it. 
Take Mr. Smith in the last car. Good. You should have put that animal down ages ago. The priority is to rescue that poor woman. Oh, yeah, yeah, whatever. Anyway, you're not coming. No. And who's gonna stop me? Very ordinary, law abiding, tax paying citizen. I listen to Radio 2, for Christ's sake. One day I answer the door and I end up in all. <laughs> I mean, you read about these people in the paper, but you don't imagine they're allowed the free run of the place. You don't think the world could be an adventure playground for the insane? Yes, well, you may have to revise your definition of insane when you meet our Mr. Jezzard. Firstly, well, you did well, not we inform the station that you were going to instigate safe. daytime patrols. And secondly, hanging about and not being from around here are not criminal offences. Yeah, well, with respect, officer, I mean, these two, they were themselves. looking really quite shifty, weren't they? Shifting us is not a criminal offence Apparently, Jezzard used to be an associate of Mr. Middlemas in the days when Mr. Middlemas used to uh, make withdrawals from other people's banks. Anyway, 20 odd years ago, Jezzard was introduced to the gang by Mr. Middlemas Sr. But uh, Jezzard was a bit ambitious and soon there was a bit of a falling out. Jezzard responded by tipping off the police about a raid on a jeweler's. Four of Mr. Middlemas's men got 20 years. That's why he hates Jezzard. He can't stand betrayal. This Jezzard character, I, I mean, he's got no reason to hurt Susan, has he? You know something, Susan Smith? You have a real problem now because, you see, the less you tell me, the more unpredictable I will become. In fact, to be honest, sometimes I'm so unpredictable that even I don't know what I'm going to do. Not till the moment that I do it. It makes being me rather wonderful, actually, because life is just one long pageant of surprises. For the last time, please, I know nothing. Fair enough. But if you don't know anything, Susan Smith, then what earthly use are you? <laughs> yes. Oh, nice one, Graham. Yeah, all right. Get back here as soon as you can. <laughs> I just seem to get lucky. <laughs> Shit! Too close, son. Morning, gentlemen. Morning, Minister. Ainsley, stay here. I should be charging you for those gates, Teddy. You've put on weight. Yeah? And you've lost it. Thought he'd be dead by now. Let's take him. Careful. A lot of witnesses. <laughs> I can't see the Minister wanting to give evidence, can you? Nor the generals. 
They just want to get out of their normal routine of lobbing peasants out of helicopters. No, you've got a choice, Jezod. You can die like an animal on those steps, or you can give us Susan Smith. All this is about her. Her and her brother have no part in this. Gilda, Nico, yes. No, Nico's part has been cut. Oh, God. He stole some personal records from me. I know, wasn't that naughty? Well, he obviously didn't give them to you. I'd have known about it by now. He might give them to me posthumously. Give me Susan Smith, or I'll do what I should have done 20 years ago. Oh, come on, Teddy. I was just a young man trying to make a bit of a name for himself. Give her to me. Now. Or your head becomes a UFO. I'm not sure I appreciate your tone, Teddy. Get down! Oh, fuck, you know, here we go. Give her to me. Don't push me now! Oh, all right, then. Ainsley, bring her along. Take him anyway. And that's the unfinished business settled. No. When that happens, it'll be just me and them. Oh, yes, please. I'd like that. Let's go. Till the next time, then. Weak as piss you are. Just get in. I knew your mother. If she was here now, she'd be disgusted. If she was here now, she'd be very smelly. Get in! <laughs> Look at his face. <laughs> split up again. I know. We won't. Here. It's all right, Susan. Jezard won't come near you again. Personally, I think we scared the shit out of him. Don't you, Martin? Yes. What is it? Well, it's just not like Jezard to give anyone up. Or anything. Well, he had a little choice, did he? Exactly. Yes, I suppose that explains it. I mean, are they interested? Yes, yes, there are Rottweilers next door, but that's a very high hedge. Look, I really can't talk right now. No, I've got a feel. It's a perfectly natural reaction. It's shock. We'll call the doctor when we get back. Get back where? To my place. What? I think it would be better if you stayed at my place for a little while. Under my protection. Your protection? Oh, you mean like when you abducted us, then interrogated us, then <laughs> took me around your garden and showed me where you buried Frank the Fat Man Mackenzie? Right. Granted, I may have overstepped the mark a little bit. I'm sorry. Overstepped the mark? I've said I'm sorry. What more can I do? Oh, yeah, and I would appreciate it if in any further correspondence connected with the order you didn't use the term anti-personnel mine. It's touchy terminology. Well, I prefer area denial munition. Yeah, well, I'm still chasing the nerve gas. I should be hearing from my contact at Porton Down. Yeah. All right. Salam. Oh, sweet. 